thought what we would do in this video is uh, go over bucktails. And, um, you know, this is, I, I want to first by, start by saying this is not a plug for any particular company. I, um, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing this to uh, get uh, any freebies or discounts or anything like that. Uh, as far as bucktails go, I probably have enough to last me the next, uh, you know, at least two or three seasons. Um, so I just want to get that out of the way first. This is not a plug. I'm not uh, sponsored by being paid by um, uh, by anybody for any of the stuff that I talk about. It's honest. It's truthful. Uh, it's my opinion. Um, so I would just want to kind of get that out in the air first. So first, I, I, I figured what we would talk about today is um, fluke fishing. And one of the most popular ways to catch them is with a bucktail. And there's lots of different ways you can catch them. Guys like um, using different types of rigs with bait, squid or uh, Achilles and um, all those types of types of things. And spoons has is, is been really popular. That's a lot of fun. We, we've started doing that a lot last year. Uh, but I think um, the most popular way is with a bucktail. And I wanted to kind of cover some, some things. Um, let's go into the rig first and then we'll kind of talk about the uh, the bucktail itself. Um, a bucktail, this is a bucktail here, this is a high-low rig and uh, you can, there's a lot of different variations of a high-low rig and I'll talk about how to tie that here in a minute. Uh, but here we have a bucktail, this is a uh, an s, &S uh, John Skinner bucktail, swing hook bucktail, we'll cover a little bit more about that. And this is a tsunami. Um, um, they have different teasers. Uh, there's the glass minnow, which is what I really like. Uh, the skirted, uh, skirted glass minnow. Um, I can't remember the exact name of it offhand. Actually, when I look, it's right here. This is the uh, silicone skirt jig, but it's the exact same head as the uh, the other variation of this, which is the glass minnow. Um, you can put hollow, hollow teasers on with a, uh, bait holder hook. Um, but anyway, all those variations are the same and we, we'll put, uh, gulp, you know, that's one of the most popular things, uh, going is gulp and God knows we have, uh, plenty of that. It's expensive, but it works. Um, and, uh, you know, on any given day with the gulp, we'll go through, you know, 15 or 20 bags. So... It's expensive, but it works. But anyway, so this is the high-low rig. And what it consists of is a couple simple knots. Uh, you have a, a dropper uh, loop down here that's tied off, uh, and it makes it easy to change out. You can just uh, loosen loosen up this knot right here and um, uh, change out your bucktail, different size, different color. Uh, and then you have the uh, dropper loop up here that's on up above it um, and uh, you put on whatever teaser that you plan on using and uh, so this is this is the rig right here and then it goes up and you have about uh, I like to use about you know three feet two and a half feet to the whole rig and then it's uh, tied up to your to your braided line with a uh, barrel swivel um, with a barrel swivel like that right there um, that's uh that's the rig so let's uh let's cover a couple things i don't want to make this too too long or too commercial or anything like that um i started tying uh pouring painting and tying my own bucktails last year and i made them all different sizes i had a bunch of do-it molds and a lead pot and paint and epoxy and a bench vise and i was ordering all the different colors of bucktail and I just decided that uh, it just was way too much work. I wanted to spend time fishing. And to be honest, at the end of the day, um, I couldn't make it as good as what uh, what's out there. Um, this is the John Skinner Bucktail by s, &S. Um, They're beautiful. They do a great job. Um, they have, it's a custom mold. It's not a do-it mold or anything like that. It has a rattle in, in the head. That I, you know, doesn't do anything. Um, you know, it's hard to hear. It's a glass, it's a, uh, 
a brass rattle that's inside there that they put into the mold when they when they pour it. Um, but it's just a it's an it's a it's a nice solid uh, solid jig. Uh, what I really like is their tie. The tie is the most uh, uh, most important thing I think. It's very consistent. It's always um, it's always really good, and it's honestly it's one of the last things on the bucktail to go, at least with S uh, S and S. Um, I have lots of these. I have them in all different shapes and sizes and colors. I've got literally, I uh, probably have, mm, uh, I think the last order I did, I ordered over 300 of them in all different colors and sizes. This is just a few. Um, but I'll keep them in the packages um, until I'm, you know, I'll, I get low and start putting them in the box. These are five ounce. I ordered, the last batch I ordered was four, five, and six. When we go out to Montauk or Block Island, you know, usually you're fishing in that, you know, 60 to 100 feet of water in that range there. And uh, so I, I've been using the heavier ones. I do have a bunch of, you know, three ounce and stuff like that. But when you're going out, out there uh, and you're fishing deeper, you know, usually that four, five, and six. Um, so this is the... Again, this is the SNS Bucktail, the John Skinner uh, Rattle, they call it Rattle and Swing Bucktail. And I think one of the most important things with this particular um, Bucktail is, and I, I want to get into this, uh, is the swing hook itself. And aside from the tie, I think it's the most important thing. And what they do is, and this is, you know, this is their their own mold, which is is nice. Um, they're putting a brass eye in the mold. It's been been designed to have this, and this is a uh, siwash hook, and it's uh, has an open eye, and um, and you, you when they were constructing it, they put it on. It's the last thing they do, they put it on, crimp it down, uh, close the eyelet off, and what that does is it allows the hook to swing freely. All right, you can see it's got back and forth, up and down, and. Why is that important? Well, for, for two reasons. One is it gives the, um, the bucktail a lot of action. When you have a, a six inch gulp hanging off the back of this thing um, and you're, you're, you're hopping it, you're bouncing it up off the bottom, um, the, the, entire, uh, the entire bait with the gulp and the bucktail itself are gonna be moving a lot. And as you're, you're drifting and you're bouncing bouncing this over rocks, everything's moving. And we all know that fluke like uh, a lot of action. They're a very aggressive fish. And um, uh, so that's one, one big, big part of this. The other part is um, also when you actually go to hook, um, when you hook the fish, um, this is a, um, this is a, a bucktail that I made myself. This is a solid hook. You can see it's the eye of the hook, this is a, uh, I think this is a five odd I stuck in this one in the mold. Um, but this is a one piece hook like this. Here's the eye of the hook. It's been at a 45 or, or sorry, a 90 and it comes up like this. When you hook a fish with a swing hook like this, as opposed to a solid hook like this one, um, the fish have a harder time shaking, um, shaking the hook out because it's able to move. Now you could say, you could, you could make a case, I guess, that you know if you have this big piece of lead slapping around, it could dislodge the hook, but uh, you know, it's, I, I have a tendency to think that you're, you're gonna keep fish uh, hooked better with, with a hook that's moving. It separates the weight from the actual hook point. Every time this thing, the head is moving around like this, the point of the hook is making a bigger, boring a bigger hole in the fish's mouth, so it's a better chance to lose them. Um, so I like the swing hook. Um, every single bucktail that I have is all is all swing hook. Um, some people say, okay, you know, and, and here's the other nice thing. W eventually, when this hook starts to, uh, and they will dull, you're banging it into rocks. Um, you know, after you've caught, caught a bunch of fish, maybe the salt got to it and you didn't rinse it off well enough. And the hook rusts out. What's really nice about a siwash and and this design with the S and S is that um, you can just open this eye up, pull the hook off, and replace it. 
with another side wash. Uh, and I keep tons of these on the boat. Uh, this is a VMC. They're fine. I, you know, I used to be a big Gamakatsu, um, Hayabusa, you know, Mustad hook guy. Um, but in a pinch, you know, these are these are fine. They're very sharp. Um, and these are a little bit, these are a little bit smaller. Uh, these are for like a four ounce or a three ounce. Um, but, you know, you can put a six, five, a six, a seven aught side wash hook. And all you have to do is you can see that this eye, uh, let me see if I can get that up there. Um, you can see that that eye is open. So all you would do is just pull the old hook off. There's a brass eye right in here. Um, and you would just slide this hook on, make sure it's facing up, you know, up in the right direction. And then just kind of squeeze the, uh, the eye closed with your pliers and then you have a nice new hook on there. So, um, you know, I really like these bucktails. Some guys are worried about, oh, you know, the paint falling, it's gonna fall off. Well, it doesn't matter what you do. You can bake when you're, when you're making these and you, you powder coat them and then, um, cure them in an oven and then put epoxy, they're still gonna, it's still gonna chip. There's only so much um, abuse that, uh, that the paint's gonna take. But it, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. What matters is the color, your presentation, and um, you know, how, your, um, how your fish finding abilities are. Uh, I think that there's some days where the fish have a preference if they're super aggressive and they're feeding and you get the right right part of the tide, it doesn't matter what color you throw. Um, you know, but usually white, solid white, um, you know, white and pink, uh, some variation of white is always good. And then you have those days where just chartreuse just, just outfishes everything else. Um, when you get that, you know, kind of off color water a little bit or the sunlight's not too too strong um you know chartreuse seems to shine but um so as far as bucktails go like i said there's a lot of good ones out there i really really prefer the uh, sns i think it's just i have a lot of confidence in it i've caught a lot of fish with them um uh, you know one of the best in the business uh, you know he uh they're using his name on it, so um, that's what he uses, and that's what he likes. So, um, S and S, I think, and for honestly, for a handmade product that's made in the USA, um, you know, you can't go wrong with that. It's a, it's a good, good product. So anyway, enough about the uh, the bucktail. That's what I like to use. That's what I have, um, and uh, it's it's just good. So let's get into the rig itself. Uh, here, like I said, we have. Our high-low rig, we have our, our uh, loop on the end, we have a dropper loop up here for our teaser, whatever that's going to be. Now let's talk teasers real quick. Like I said, um, this is that Tsunami uh, silicone skirt jig glass minnow. The only difference between the skirted jig and the glass minnow is the skirt itself. It's the same exact head, uh, but they wind it on, on the glass minnow. It's a mylar skirt and it's about that short. I'm not crazy about them. I, I mean, you know, it is what it is. But these, uh, I like these a lot. I like the, the, the length of the hook. I, it sticks way out, which is good. It's got some barbs on it, which are nice. That you, When you put your gulp on, it helps a little bit. I think they could probably have a little bit different arrangement on the hook. But overall, it's uh, cheap for the most part. Um, you know, if you were making them yourself, you could probably, probably make them for 30 cents a piece. But... Uh, sometimes it's just more convenient to buy them. Uh, so that's this, and this is also, this is the uh, Tsunami uh, Hollow Teaser. And I, I, I like these. Um, there are certain times when this is, it just seems like it's too much. Um, and you switch up to something like this. Maybe the, there's, um, you know, the, the squitter around, they're a little bit smaller. Uh, there's a lot of times where this, uh, this, um, hollow teaser seems to work better um, and what I do with that is on the dropper loop and I'll show you this here in a second I'll just use a three or four aught uh, bait holder hook lots of good brands out there Kamikatsu uh, Hayabusa it doesn't matter um, and um, you know make your loop thread thread the loop, the loop through here and uh, 
put uh, put your hook on. Um, and then you can also have where you don't have a bucktail or a, a teaser at all. There's been a lot of times where you can just run a bucktail. Um, and that works out really well too. Sometimes, you know, uh, there can be too much, I guess. But So that's the standard rig. You can also, the other option is this, and this is called a palmer head. And this is uh, similar to a bucktail, but it doesn't have bucktail. Um, it's basically a big ball of lead up here with a long, long shank hook, a keeper for your soft plastic, same sort of, uh, and I'm glad, I think this is what um, Tsunami could do, is to put a smaller keeper on here like this, so when you push your gulp up on, it kind of locks it in place for as best it can. Um, but what's nice about this is, is if you're in some heavier current, um, not having the bucktail on this uh, eliminates the drag that the water uh, creates. So, um, you know, if you're, you want to, you know, uh, harder current, you want to keep contact with the bottom a little bit better. A lot of times I'll give uh, the new guys this so they can feel that bottom. And once they kind of get the, uh, the hang of it and they get the feel down, then we'll switch them over to a bucktail. But there's a lot of times where the Palmer head with a big gulp on it um, really shines. Uh, the Palmer heads are really good. Uh, we use those a lot. So, um, so anyway, so that's it. And then that line goes up. So we have our dropper loop, our bucktail or our Palmer head, whatever we're going to use, whichever teaser you like to use. You could even just have a bait holder hook over here on a drop on a dropper loop with a grub or whatever you want to put on it. That's fine. And then I go up about uh, another two feet or so, two and a half feet. Um, and uh, have just a regular uh, barrel swivel. Um, so that's that's what I do for that. Let me show you how to tie this thing. Um, now we use a uh, fluorocarbon. Um, I'm not gonna, I've got some, uh, usually we'll run, I use 20, 20 pound test a lot. Um, sometimes I'll give some guys 30, but that's that seems like a lot sometimes. It, it really depends. Depends on where we're fishing, um, who we're fishing with. Um, but this is not fluorocarbon, by the way. This is just mono. This is that cheapy Andy monofilament I'm just using for demonstration purposes. But if we're going out to Montauk or Block Island and we're fishing in that, you know, 60 to 100 feet of water, usually I'm using 20. I like the lighter lighter line. You can feel more with it. It has less resistance in the water, uh, but it does take some uh, to take some finesse. You got to know um, how to set the hook, when not to set the hook, um, and uh, you know be careful when you're fighting the fish. But anyway, let me let me get into this. So the first thing that, uh, and this is going to be hard to see, and I probably shouldn't have done it on a white table, but you can. The big part is not seeing the line itself. I want you to watch my my hands, my fingers. This is this is um, the most important thing, and I will try to go slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my whole rig. I want about three feet. Okay, the whole rig I want about three feet. The first part we're going to do, and I have not cut this off the spool. I don't cut it off the spool until I'm done with it. The first thing we're going to do is tie our dropper loop. This is where our bucktail or our palmer head or whatever is going to go. I'm going to, I'm just going to double my line like this. I'm going to go up a ways, not too, too far, but not too short either. If you make it too short, you're not going to be able to get your bucktail through. If you make it too long, then what ends up happening is your hook starts getting caught and tangled uh, up, up here. And, so I like to keep it, um, you know, maybe about five inches, four or five inches. So what I do is I'll go here and I tie, you just tie an overhand knot, take a loop, go once, twice. That's all you did was tie an overhand loop. Can we see that? Let me try to line this up here. Excuse my fat fingers. Um, just tie an overhand loop. Now what you're going to want to do is, one of the important things with fluorocarbon to also remember, and I'm trying not to give you, throw too much info at you, but this is important stuff. Fluorocarbon uh, 
and mono, but fluorocarbon more so will burn itself if you just go yanking on this thing every, well, when you tie a knot and you just go yanking on it. Uh, you, you don't want to do that. You want to make your knot slow, but you definitely want to want to moisten it. So just give it some give it some spit or whatever. If you don't want to put it in your mouth, spit in your fingers and rub it in there just so it has a little bit of lube. And then very slowly make your knots. You don't want to go cinching it down real fast because then that's going to cause friction and burn it. And when you burn the line, that's no good. Um, it, it, it can break uh, later on down the road. But I like to make my knots as nice as I can, and I'll cinch it up a little bit. You know, I see guys all the time, they wrap the line around their hand like this, and they get this one, they hook the loop to the boat cleat in the back, and they get, you know, they're yanking on that thing. You don't need to make anything that tight. It does not need to be that tight. So um, pull it down, cinch it down so it's snug, and look at your knot. Look at it. If it looks good, you did it. If it doesn't look good, cut it off and retie it. But anyway, that one looks good. So we have our dropper loop. It's about uh, four, four and a quarter inches or so. And then I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to snip off my tag. Now, you don't have to go. The other thing I see, too, is I see guys getting in here. You, know, you gotta cut that tag off. You gotta get way. They get like to get way in there, and they're gonna make sure that there's no, none of that tag in there. And they're digging in there. Listen, a little piece of tag like this helps in case your knot starts to slip. It's got something else to grab onto. And secondly, at the end of the day, if you're, I mean, think about it. This little piece of line here is what maybe an eighth of an inch long. If that's going to bother them, then what about the other three feet of line you've got going on? So, the point of the story is don't worry about getting wee down in there. I like to leave a little bit of a tag, which you probably can't see, uh, but I'll try to show you anyway. Um, you know, it's just, just a little, little teeny piece. Little teeny piece sticking up. Anyway, um, so now we're going to go up here, and I like to go about... Ah, probably about 14 inches, 12 to 14 inches up. Okay, right about here. Give myself a little bit more slack. Remember, I have not cut it off the spool yet. So we've got our loop over here on my left thumb. And I'm going to go up about uh, 12, 14 inches or so. And all I'm going to do is just cross my, cross my fingers. Right? And now we have a loop. The loop goes up and around back towards the spool. Okay, that's the line. So here's your, your dropper loop where your bucktail is going to go. And then it comes up and it goes around and over here to your, to your spool. You can make this however long you want. I mean, it really doesn't matter if you, if you screw it up a little bit and you want to make it a little shorter. You make it a little shorter, just kind of get yourself situated. Now... This is the loop that a lot of people have a hard time with. So I want you to remember something, and there's plenty of better, probably way better videos than what I'm doing here, um, is just start wrapping that line in itself, right around itself. And I'll go around like five or six times or whatever. And then you'll see right here, I've created a loop in the line, just like this. So I'll take my big loop that I created when we first started started this particular knot. I'll put it through. And what I like to do is put it in my teeth. Give it a little bit of lube. Now I pull back. I'm pulling back with my teeth and pulling my hands away. And what that has done is created this dropper loop. Can we see that? All right. Drop a loop right there. And we'll look at her knob. We'll square it up a little bit. Make sure she's pretty. And give it a little a small, small pull. But that looks pretty darn good. So here we've got our dropper loop down here. Where our bucktail is going to go. And the dropper loop up here. Where our teaser is going to go. And now we're ready to do whatever we want. Then what I do is I'll pull the rest of this out as far as up as I want to go. Like this, and that's about, uh, oh, I want to say about two feet, two feet or so, uh, 20, 20 something inches. And let me get my uh, very manly pliers here and we'll cut that off. 
like so. And then we'll talk about the barrel swivel. Now, get yourself a good barrel swivel. Don't use those big, ugly things, um, you know, that your grandfather had. Get get some nice ones. There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, but I'm going to show you a, a knot. This Now, this one end of this, you're going to connect to your braid and on your rod. I like to tie a Palomar knot, but you can tie whatever knot you want. Uh, one of the knots I like to do is I have my leader. I double my line. Okay, this is the, the end I cut off the spool. I go through. I have the double line loop in this hand. I have the tag end over here in this hand. And all I'm going to do is wrap it over my finger. Go around both lines like this. One, two, You know how that goes when you're doing a video. I could tell you this a hundred times. My, my, uh, and now you've created a, a little loop up here by your fingers. You just pass this loop through the loop up by your fingers. Hold on to it. And now you've got the loop and the tag. And I didn't leave myself enough room. But that's the way it goes. But still, we can tie it. Um, you know, it's one of those things like when you're trying to show people something and, you know, you, you know how that works. Um, uh, anyway, so we get that, give a little bit of saliva, pull it down. Now I'm going to hold my tag and the, the, the two pieces. I've got this tag. I've got the loop. I'm going to snug all this down like so. Cinch it up. Now I've got a, I've got my tag tag line here, single tag, and I've got this loop, and I'm going to cut all three of those. One, two, three. Don't cut your main line, and don't cut it too short either, like we talked about. And you should just have uh, three little spikies sticking up, three little tags, just like that. And that's one of the best knots you can tie for fluorocarbon. Uh, do not tie a Palomar knot with fluorocarbon. There's two different types of knots. You have a cinch knot and a clinch knot. Um, a um, the Palomar knot will burn. So, uh, if you use a, a um, or I'm sorry, fluorocarbon will burn with a Palomar knot. So, you want to try to avoid uh, any knot that's going to cause the um, fluorocarbon to dig into itself, which will then eventually uh, have it'll break. So. This knot, I have no idea what the name of this knot is. I'll do one another day. I'll do another video with a piece of rope so you can see it. But anyway, so that's it. So this is our whole thing. We'll take our bucktail here. This is a, I think this is a, you know, in the peak of the season, I can tell you just by looking at it or just by touching it. Uh, I think this is a six. Anyway, we'll pass our loop through here. Loop through the eye of the bucktail, send her on down. Like this, okay, you don't need to pull tight. She's dangling there. So the bucktail's on. Now let's see what I wanna do. Let's do a, uh, let's put a, let's put a, um, oh, I don't know. We can put whatever. Uh, you do the same thing. You wanted to put this bait holder hook on. You would just take your loop, <clears throat> pass it through here. Right, right through the eye of the hook. Go in through here, wrap it around once. I like to go around twice, just to, and I'll show you why in a second. Now you could do this if with anything that you're gonna put on there, but the hook especially. What that does is it kind of helps support the hook sticking straight out. When you go around it twice like that, it's not necessary, but if you do do it, it'll kind of, kind of guide that hook staying straight. And you can, you know, you if you were going to put a hollow, hollow uh, teaser on, you would slide that on before you put the hook on. Um, but this would be the same thing if you were even going to put like a skirted jig or whatever you're going to put on there. And that's it. That's the whole rig. That's a high-low rig, and that's what we use for, for fluke. Um, and uh, it's one of my favorite ways to fish. Get yourself a nice rod. We'll go into that in another video. Um, seven foot medium heavy I prefer um, some guys use medium heavy some guys use heavy 
I like extra heavy. Uh, I think there's a plenty of tip, and I like to have the, the extra backbone there, especially when you're fishing deeper with a you know, a six ounce bucktail and a teaser and everything. It, uh, it weighs a lot, so I want to be able to make sure I'm moving that thing. So that's it. Get yourself some good bucktails. I prefer S&S. &S. Get yourself some good hooks. Hayabusa, Kamikatsu, those are good. Get yourself some replacement Siwash hooks. A big thing of gulp, a spool of fluorocarbon, a couple palmer heads. These are always good. Don't, you got to make sure you have palmer heads. Don't just go straight bucktails all the time. There is a, um, <clears throat> there's a place almost every trip, a time in the tide when a palmer head will fit, outfish everything. Um, it's, it's the way that the, the, the palmer head doesn't have any, uh, like I said before, the, it doesn't have the bucktail on it, so it, there's less resistance in the water, and it definitely changes the way that gulp moves, too. So, anyway, get yourself some good hardware, some good line, uh, same thing, fluorocarbon. Uh, you know, again, I, I, I keep dropping names because they get a plug and I don't get anything for it, but I'll share it with you. Uh, you have cigars out there. A lot of guys like cigar. A lot of guys don't. Uh, I love Sunline. Sunline I've been using for a long time back in my freshwater bass fishing days. And uh, Sunline is just awesome stuff. Shooter, the Sunline shooter. <clears throat> it is expensive. <coughs> Excuse me. It is expensive, but it's worth it. That stuff will last forever. It's incredibly uh, abrasion resistant. So sunlight. So again, thanks for watching. We'll do another episode coming up here soon. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you soon.